We've got stocks hovering near the flat line this morning after all three of the major averages notched their best week of the year. The next big test for the market is going to be the earnings reports that we're going to be getting here this week and then also looking ahead to Friday and Jackson Hole. What we hear from Fed Chair Jay Powell, that could potentially put the rally that we have seen, put it on hold if there isn't enough dovish commentary within that. So let's talk about what all of this means for the markets with our next guest. And we want to bring in, if we can keep scrolling here, Matt Stuckey. He is Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management's Chief Portfolio Manager. Matt, it's great to have you and great to talk with you again. So let's talk about what is right or what's on the line when it comes to the markets this week. Certainly, there's a lot when you take a look ahead to Jackson Hole. You've got earnings report, also the DNC kicking off. What's top of mind for you and why? Look, I mean, I, I think this week is going to be highlighted by um, you know, traders really kind of evaluating what's what's in store for us in Jackson Hole, because I think that's the key to kind of the next phase of the market. You know, are we going to be in a market where the Fed is not so much of a headwind to asset prices, or is the Fed going to start to, to ease gradually and start to bring uh, monetary policy back down from a restrictive level? Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of data points between now and then, but one data point that I would highlight that I think hasn't really got enough attention is just the, the conference board leading economic index. Um, right now, we're in the midst of the fourth deepest drawdown in this in this series, all the way going back to the 1950s. And the other times we've seen drawdowns in the leading economic index to this level have been you know, 1973, 1981, and 2008. We're 14.7 percent off the all-time highs that were set at the end of 2021 for this index. And so, to me, it's just a deterioration factor that keeps um, it keeps um, uh, going against us here as we look at kind of where the economy is headed. And so, it's important for us to to, to kind of look to Jackson Hole to see that the Fed can start to uh, remove the restricted policy. Uh, we're going to find out see and see what happens this upcoming Friday. But, uh, you know, to me, I, I'm, I'm paying laser-like focus on kind of where LEIs are headed from here. Is, is it too early for the Fed to declare victory on inflation at Jackson Hole? You know, I, I think that they're going to be awfully careful about declaring victory. I, th I think that uh, the most likely outcome for for the meeting uh, this upcoming Friday is a 25 basis point cut absent, you know, some other kind of uh, downside surprise to inflation or employment between now and then. Um, you know, what, what really kind of looks at, you know, my thinking here is just simply, I, I don't think the Fed wants to repeat the mistake that they made in the fourth quarter of 2023. And the mistake that they made was signaling, you know, a, an aggressive path of rate cuts uh, in 2024. And here we are in the month of August, and we haven't had a single cut yet. Uh, what happened back in the fourth quarter of 2023 is that uh, investors, as well as business owners, started to um, um, take that expectation of Fed cuts that signaled from the Federal Reserve speakers. And, and, and that started to influence their behavior. You started to see activity pick back up. You started to see loan demand pick back up. And, and that reignited that upside uh, surprise to inflation that we saw in the, four, in the first quarter of 2024. Um, I think the Fed wants to be a little bit guarded against that as we think through you know, the next couple of quarters. Um, you know, certainly, they would like to ease policy, uh, but they don't want inflation to reinvigorate back higher uh, and have to start the process all over again. So then, Matt, in, in terms of what the market is pricing in right now, is the market too aggressive? Maybe not so much for the September of reading, because it seems like, what is it, just about 72 percent of traders are expecting that 25 basis point. But going beyond September in terms of the number of cuts we're expecting here before the end of the year and then into 2025. Well, if you think about it, you know, if inflation is indeed moving back down sustainably to 2%, and we can debate whether or not it's going to happen. But if that is the case, you know, there, there is room for about four cuts, uh, you know, according to just some back of the envelope math with the Taylor rule here. Uh, the Fed increasingly is becoming more restrictive as inflation is coming down. Uh, and, you know, taking taking a percent off or so with the Fed funds rate essentially just gets the Fed back to where they started this year in terms of kind of where monetary policy sits relative to current economic conditions. Um, so I don't think the market's getting over its ski tips in terms of pricing in cuts in uh, between now and the end of the year and, and you know, somewhere between three and four cuts. Um, where we do have some concerns, though, is that if you don't see um, inflation continue to decelerate back down to uh, 2% sustainably, and, and here the sustainable part of the picture is whether or not wage growth kind of moves back to sustainable three to three and a half percent levels. 
But if if indeed inflation gets down to two percent, I don't think the, the market's overpriced in terms of what what's discounted here in terms of Fed cuts. Uh, Matt, just lastly, while we have you, we got some of the favorite household retail names that are reporting earnings, whether you like uh, holes in your jeans at Urban Outfitters or whether you like things for discount at uh, TJX or Ross stores, or if you just are working on a DIY project at home with Lowe's. A lot of reads on the consumer, uh, and I didn't even mention Target, of course, with the grocery aisles as well. What, what is your general sense of where the consumers stand right now and, and what we're set to hear from how all of these executives are going to need to identify where there are cracks or where there is strength in the consumer? You know, I'm sure a lot of uh, guests on your show have talked about kind of the K-shaped uh, economy that we're in today. And I think that's also um, being reflected in the retailing earnings reports that we've seen. Um, look, if we're looking at, um, you know, something like a Target or something like a Walmart or a Costco, uh, the core business is performing quite well. But within the business, there is a migration towards trade down. Uh, across all different consumer types. And trade, I'm just meaning that you're a little bit more discerning about kind of where the incremental dollar is spent with an emphasis on value uh, versus kind of more of the discretionary purchase that that occurs for a lot of retailers without their end consumer really thinking about it. So I think that environment is likely to persist for a while, um, especially until uh, you start to get into kind of an upswing in terms of consumer confidence as well as an upswing in employment. That's just not the conditions that we're sitting with today. Matt Stuckey, who is the Northwestern Mutual Wealth Management Chief Portfolio Manager. Matt, great to catch some time with you.